Hello, this is Mike Green. I'm going to do a demonstration of Shift Spline Transform, which is a very useful plugin. Um, okay, so you have your object and you add the Shift Spline Transform plugin. Uh, opens up a panel and you've got active before bones, add, delete, clone, and property. property. Um, with Shift Spline Transform, you can add multiple splines to deform your object. So we're just going to add one. We're going to call it Spline. You can use a weight map to find the effect of the spline transform to just one part of the, the mesh. I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, you can choose how many points you want to be along the spline. You can add to that later take away from that later. Let's go with six. Uh, we've got a distance of one, that's how far apart they are. Or you could choose to attach an item you've already got in your scene to the spline that's already there. So if we go OK, you can see it's created some nulls which are parented to this spline. They don't have to be. You can parent them to other things. So you can use them to control other bits and pieces. And we've got this new panel which lists your anchor points along the spline and gives you a transform tab. You can add more points to that spline and you can normalize them, which I'm not entirely sure what that does. It seems to just make them bigger uh, and affect them. You can choose to rest those positions as well. Um, you choose a display quality, which 32 seems sufficient for most of the time. Uh, you can choose uh, whether they're active. Um, choose the weight map for the deformation again. Uh, you can choose to fix the length uh, and that I'll show you in a little bit. What you want to do first though is set the rest position of the spline. So I've got them all set to here. So if I just go set rest position, it brings up this goldie gook, which would presumably be in Japanese. Go OK. And let's just move to another frame. And if we select say anchor point 2, and move it out. You can see that nothing's happening. Now this is important. If you bring up the panel, you have to set the geometry for a subdivision object to last for it to work. And you can see there it's affected the, the deformation. And if you animate it, you can see it works. Um, if I get anchor point three, let's just pull that out. You can see at the moment it's stretching to match the thing and if you um, rotate the what do you call it rotate the null it rotates the handles if you scale the handles in the Z that gives you control over the um, strength of the, the spline okay uh, let's just go to anchor point two we'll just rotate that a bit okay so at the moment it's stretching to go between those splines now if I open the panel again for spline transform, Oops. there we go. Um, you go to property, you can fix the length. Let me just close that. So you can see it snaps back to be the original length it was. Now you get the once you've fixed the length, you can have position control, so if you drag that you can see it slides along the spline. Okay, or you can scale it along the spline. Okay, set that back to one. And it has envelope buttons. So if you click envelope, it brings up the envelope editor, and then you can say set keyframe. And then uh, drag that. Let me just scale this down for you so you can see it. Uh, if you move that, then as the Into position so you can see it. 
as it goes from one position to the next. I think what I'll do is I'll just move those points along in time. So they aren't affected by the spline changing. So you see there it stays stationary and then it animates along the length. So that way you can do snakes and things like that. Snaking along a particular line. Okay? You could set it to just affect a particular part of the thing. That's got a fall off on it along that length. Um, or we could choose one of the other bits. You can see it's using just that part there, which is these bone weight maps. I can set it to none again. So that's basically it. You can set as many of those splines up as you want to, say for along an eyebrow or along lips on an object, so you can pull the lips out. Um, <coughs> you can remove and add ang points, so if we delete that, go OK, and then you can remove that completely from the scene. I'll just shift that a little bit further. Oops. Did I shift both of them? So let's grab that one. Shift that up. You can see now it's just going along this part of the, the spline. Okay. So that's shift spline transform. It's uh not too hard if you can get around the slightly unconventional parts. And you can set the rest positions for the individual points. <coughs> and there you have it.